Thank you so much, man. That means a lot. That's the I mean, that's the point of it, man. I was just wanting to empower empower my people, man. And like this stuff life changing. Yeah, I, I gotta find out like where where did you where did you get all you know, because I saw you on the See, what was it? The hero conference. Here. Hold on. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you killing it, man. And, and I had, I just had to get you on here, man, because I think what, what you're doing, I want um, our audience to be able to facilitate and, and, and grow with you because I see you doing some extraordinary things. Okay. Can you uh, say what you just said again? I was trying to change networks. Yeah, I was just saying that I, I wanted to share your information and and your your journey and give you your yeah. flowers while you're here so people can oh, see man. like the extraordinary stuff that you're doing so they can actually like, I know like our audience, our audience is, um, we, we're, we're notaries, right? So a lot of us are professionals and we deal with a lot of real estate documents um, where we're constantly, uh, notarizing loan closings and stuff like that, which, mm -hmm. you know, you do. But at the same time, a lot of the notaries are getting all of this money coming in and they're like, hey man, I wanna make some sound investments. Um, right. I'm doing all these loan closings. I know what the document's looking like. I know what the interest rates are looking like. Right. <laughs> what? How do I proceed? So I wanted to definitely bring someone in from the real estate investment side to kind of like say, hey, this guy has skin in the game. Let let's listen to him. Love it, all over it. Yeah, I'm just gonna stream this real quick. Uh, special guest. What what state are you in, by the way? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yes, sir. Nice. <laughs> I went out there for a wedding one time. Why? What, Little Rock? I believe so. All right, we got some people jump, jumping in now. Uh, what's up, Dre? Uh, real estate. And then you had did a, uh, I, I don't know if it was a podcast that you was actually doing. Um. I think his name was George or something like that. And um, you had talked about the generational curse and the imposter oh, yeah. syndrome. So yeah, yeah we got we gotta unpack that stuff, man, because like you you dropping some heat, bro. You dropping heat. So okay, so we are live on Facebook now. Let me go back to this. Cool, cool, cool. Got you on here. So can you see yourself? All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I see it. And let me uh, put a quick post on Instagram. Let them know that we are live. Do you do many interviews? Oh, yeah, man. I, I love this stuff, man. I do. I can talk about real estate all day long, man. That, that's what I love. <laughs> all day long. This is, my, this is my passion, man. How long you been in the real estate game now? Three years, nine months. Nice. Good. Good. That means you haven't been plagued with all the crap. <laughs> that's, that's been circuit. You, you don't have that. You know the you're you're fresh. You're bringing fresh yeah. information into this yes, industry. Yes, I'm telling you, man. All right, let me do this. We are live. People. I'm telling you, man. Join us. All 
All right, cool. So let me just pull this up on Facebook in case people have questions on Facebook. Share that. Boom. All right, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, so we, we get a lot of people like right now because it's Monday, we do yeah. get a lot of people, uh, a lot of notaries that are running appointments. So like, because it's early, they may not be able to jump on now, but they will jump on for the replay or as we call it the encore presentation, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> so we, we try to give it a theatrical thing here. I'm trying to be the black Walt Disney in this joint, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started, man. Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hit, man. Your it. humble hip hop I sales coach, it. Tiger Toledo, and you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard? Today, I have a very, very special guest by the name of Henry Washington. I've been following this guy for a good, you know, like four or five months already. I've seen him doing some extraordinary things when it comes to teaching real estate to the younger generation, um, even the older generation, the people that may have, that may be in this inertia and, and feel stagnant. And he brings some fresh new content that I have never seen anybody bring before. I'm excited to have him on here. I got like literally, Henry, I got a journal of questions that I got to sure. ask you, bro. Because like, I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen, this guy, you can see the genuineness in his in his delivery when he is talking about real estate. Like he he could care less if you buy his program or not. I'm, I'm gonna just be honest. He could give a rat's ass if you buy it or not. His thing is just like, hey, if you want to learn this thing, I have the resources for you. This is what you can do to get it. And let's take over this. Let's break this generational curse. So ladies and gentlemen, if you can please help me welcome Mr. Henry Washington. Thank you, sir. Salute Thank to you, sir. you, brother. Appreciate salute, it. salute. It. <laughs> all right, bro, let, let, let's get started. First of all, tell the people where, what city and state that you're in or where you're from, and then um, yep. give people a little bit of a background on yourself. Yeah, man. So I live and invest in what they call Northwest Arkansas. So we're up in the Northwest corner of Arkansas. So we're about three hours Northwest of Little Rock. Um, and up here, man, it's a unique, it's a unique little place. So um, it's, it's still Arkansas, but you've got, you've got so much business here that has created this unique real state market so oh we Walmart, might have some streaming uh, issues here that's why one come from headquarters here let's see if i can fix that hold on okay better yes all right so you got Walmart headquartered here, right? Largest company, one of the largest companies in the world. And that creates this uh, big city feel in a small area, right? Because you got people from all over the world literally moving here to Arkansas to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also got Tyson Foods, Tyson Chicken, they're headquartered here. You've got JB Hunt Transportation headquartered here. And all these companies have all these uh, different. Uh, uh, vendors that that provide products or services to these companies, they're also here. And so you're in Arkansas, you got people mm -hmm. from all over the globe moving here. And that creates a market where people a lot of people like to rent because, you know, who, who's moving here from large cities that wants to stay here forever. It's still Arkansas, right? And so right. they come over here and they rent. So you get great rents. But it's still Arkansas, so you get now. You know, what does America, that mean? It's still pricing. Arkansas, though. Well, like, like, <laughs> yeah. help me understand okay. what that means. Typ typically, Middle America real estate prices are okay. substantially lower, right? And so, I'm not paying the same price as somebody in California is paying 
mm. for, for real estate because it's in the middle of America, but I get better rents than other parts of Arkansas because of all the corporations and industry that's here. And gotcha. so lower barrier to entry as far as purchase price, but great rents uh, uh, as far as, you know, bringing in monthly income. So it's kind mm. of just like, I call it, I call it like a little real estate unicorn market. Nice. Um, uh, so that's that's where I'm at. That's where I invest. Um, most all of my property is is is, is here in Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, I have some that's about an hour away, but you could still technically call it Northwest Arkansas. And so my story, man, my story. It's an interesting yeah. one. I uh, I I got started investing the, uh, three years and nine months, and I know I know the exact time frame because I just quit my day job and I had to do the math to figure out. When I started real estate oh, investing, to when I went, to when I went full time investing, how long exactly was it? So three years and nine months, man. And so when I started, man, I remember I was uh, uh, kind of the thing that pushed me over the edge was I got married super quick. So my hmm. wife and I got married one year to the day that we met. Okay. And so I was prior to that, I was your typical like go to work, uh, make your money, come home. And then I would not do anything of value, right? Play video games, right? Like uh, enjoying my life, but but not adding anything into this world, not saving any money. Uh, I had a great job, but none of that matters. Like it don't matter if you're making 50,000 a year or 150,000 a year. If you spend every dollar you make, you're still broke. Indeed. And so that's what I was doing. I was sp spending every dollar I made. And so all that's well and good until you get married and your wife is like, what's our dream house going to look like? How many kids are we going to have? Right. What school district are they going to live in? Right. All these questions I didn't have answers to because I had no money. Right. And so I started panicking literally in the middle of the night when I, well, I got to make some more money because I can't afford to do these things that we're talking about. Right. And uh, I just didn't, I just, didn't want to be that that you know deadbeat husband <laughs> like mm -hmm. the first house my wife and I bought like we had um uh I couldn't be on the loan my credit was so bad that they were like hey it's just better if you do this on your own and um you know and then you I just couldn't be a part of it and that's a blow man as a, as a husband as a provider like I just I just knew I needed a different path. And so as I woke up in the middle of the night and I started Googling like, man, what are some side hustles? How do I make some extra money? Mm -hmm. Just kept seeing articles and um, videos about being a landlord in real estate and uh, ended up landing on this uh, TED talk. And it was this kid, he was overseas in Europe, but he had 25 or 27 properties and he was financially free. And he was talking about the benefits of real estate. And I was just like, this kid can do it. like. I'll just do that. <laughs> That's literally the thought that went through my head. It was like, I'll, I'll just buy some property. I only had a thousand dollars in the same decision immediately on the spot. Hmm. And when you make a decision, there's power in making a decision because I made a choice. I said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be successful because if this kid can be successful, I can be successful. And that immediately kind of like removes roadblocks in mindset. Because today I talked to a friend of mine who was a real estate broker. She gave me a box of books. I said, hey, I want to invest in real estate. Point me in the right direction. She gave me a box of books. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I read Richest Man in Babylon. Like I ended up reading all these mindset books first. And I didn't do mindset that. Mindset books. Like, right. I didn't do that by design. But looking okay. back, that was the right way to do it for me because mm. you know with any venture real estate right notary like if you're gonna be successful you gotta you gotta fix what's up here first right like if you want to make money to change your life but you haven't changed your mind about money then you're just gonna blow that money anyway you're gonna mess it off right yeah you learned a new skill that's gonna make you more money but if you're not going to do something with that money, that's going to provide you a better life than all you did was just find a higher paying job. You didn't, you didn't change your life. 
right? And so by reading the mindset books and helping me change the way I thought about money and helping me understand the power that um, investing has, it helped me to then when I started making income to start doing something more positive with that income which then kind of compounds upon itself and helps you to build a better life, right? So, cause I already had a, I had a decent thing. I was making six figures. I didn't have a money-making issue. I had a mindset issue about money, right? Gotcha. Um, and so um, what I immediately did was after I read those mindset books was I started putting away 10% of everything I made and pay myself first. That's not something I ever did. I've always been a, I, 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 was, I was tithing. Like that was always something I knew I do what you can with the rest. And so I switched that up and I said, I get paid, pay the Lord, pay myself. And then if I don't have enough money left to take care of my bills, it forces your brain to get creative to figure out how can I make what's left work, right? And so I was, I had some side hustles. I was, I would buy stuff at, uh, I would buy stuff at an auction and mm. pennies on the dollar, like Amazon returns and stuff. And then I would flip them and sell on eBay. Breaking up a little bit there, or offer uh, up. Henry. So just, is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah, it was just breaking up just a little bit. Okay. I also just started telling people at that moment, uh, like, I'm a real estate investor, mm -hmm. right? I just put that energy out there for people. I wanted people to know that they think, hey, I bought, right? Um, and that turned out, that worked out well. That's how I found my first deal. A buddy of mine heard that I was buying property, investment properties. He was in a tough situation with a house. That he needed to sell immediately and so he came to me and he said hey man i gotta sell my house i gotta sell it because i need to buy this other piece of property i need to sell it by this day and i want to sell it for this much and i was like cool i'll buy it i had my money but my mind was made up that i was gonna figure out how to buy it and so i worked with other investors in my area who um who just kind of have the entrepreneurial mindset and they told me they were like hey man you got to figure out how to buy it, right? You only got a thousand dollars. You need twenty thousand to close on it. Sounds like you need to come up with nineteen thousand dollars in the next few weeks. Figure mm -hmm. it out, right? And so, uh, what I ended up landing on after brainstorming with uh, with this uh, this other investor who's now a business partner of mine, and he was like, you know, do you have a four hundred one k? And I did not, but my wife did. And so, what we were able to do was take out a loan against our four hundred one k, her four hundred one k. Now, when you take money out of a 401k as not a loan where you just extract money, you got to pay penalties and fees mm -hmm. and taxes. But when you borrow against it, you don't have to pay those penalties and fees and taxes. You just have to make payments to payments automatically from your paycheck. And so I was able to access $19,000, put my thousand dollars with it, download, uh, uh, put the down payment on that property, and then when I, after I bought it, I raised the rents on the tenant who was in there because um, all he was doing was just paying the mortgage. It was a, he was doing my, my buddy, my buddy was doing him a favor, allowing him to live there, just paying the mortgage. And so I raised mm -hmm. his rents to market rents. And then I started collecting rent and that rent covered the mortgage, taxes, insurance, all the expenses. And then the cash flow, the leftover mm -hmm. covered the payment back to the 401k. So really? I wasn't putting a bunch of money in my pocket every month, mm -hmm. but I, but I turn, I figured out how to take like monopoly money and turn it into real money every month. Right. And that was just super powerful to me. And my immediate thought was, this is crazy. I got to figure out how to do this a lot more like right yeah. now. Yeah. So that was, that was my intro into the game. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> I love that. So you was able because intrinsically no money came out of your pocket besides the thousand dollars, right? Right, and you were able to get the mortgage covered, the taxes, 
um, an insurance covered, as well as make a little extra from that tenant being there to pay back that loan. So then, so then what happened? Like, like what kind of position did it put you in to, uh, what, what kind of position did it put you in? It was, it was, it was eye opening, right? Cause now you see the power of real estate and that's not, you know, that what I did wasn't like, there's no class on like, here's how you go, you know, take monopoly money and turn it into real money. Like it was, it just showed me how creative you can be with this real estate investment asset class. And that like, it didn't, you know, most people think you want to buy a house, you have to save up some money mm -hmm. until you have a down payment and then you put the down payment down and then you get a loan and then you pay it for 30 years. I'm that's one what of people them. think, I'm <laughs> right? <one of> them. <laughs> but that's not the only way to purchase property. Real estate allows you to be super creative. And so it just got me thinking, it got me networking, asking questions with other investors and figuring out more ways to buy property. And so what we did next was because we bought this property. So the numbers were, we paid 115,000 for it. It was worth about 140 to 150,000. If I need to do a deal, where do I come up with that money without having to go back to the 401k? Mm -hmm. And so we were able to, I talked to a banker and the banker was like, Hey, you can do a line of credit against the equity. We'll lend you up to 85% of the equity. And so I was able to take out a line of credit. Right. And so the bank basically said, all right, your house is worth 150. You paid 115. So here's, you know, I'm not great with math in my head, but here's, you know, 40, 50 grand worth of equity. Right. And we'll loan you 85% of that. And so I was able to get access to about 20 grand of a line of credit. Mm. And now I leveraged that pro property and then I would go buy another property. So I got, I started marketing to find good deals. And when I would find a good deal that I wanted to maybe flip, I could take that that fifth can use it as a down and this for a profit and then I would pay it back and I put that down payment back on my line of credit so I was able to rinse and repeat that same 20 grand worth of equity from that very first deal to buy more homes to make more income right so mm. basically took a thousand dollars and turned it in, into more income in multiple homes so let me ask you this the the Henry Washington now versus the Henry Washington when you first got started. What what looks like a good deal to you? What looked like a good deal to you back then versus now? Yeah, uh, you know it's not much different. I, okay. I uh, I, um, I learned early on through just like listening to different podcasts and. So I, I was, what I didn't touch on was like, once I had my epiphany moment in the middle of the night to when I bought that property, that first property was probably about a 90 day period. Okay. And within that 90 days, like I just started absorbing all the content I could around real estate, podcasts, audio books, you know, printed books, like if, if, if I, like I was absorbing content, right? So I was constant learning. And like now there's a uh, tons of people who have courses and things that can teach you real estate. Like it wasn't as prevalent back then. Sure, there were some, but like it wasn't as easily accessible as it is now. So the main media for people to absorb content was, was either books or podcasts. Mm -hmm. And so like I was in in them everything and what i learned along the way like i just kept hearing people at different and the other thing i did was i got in every real estate meetup group if there were investors meeting in my, my area talking like i was in the room because mm. i wanted to meet the people who were doing it like you know uh, goals become a lot more realistic to you when you see other people that have made them and so i was constantly surrounding myself with other investors and like by doing that 
I learned a couple of things. Mm -hmm. One, everybody in all these rooms wanted to buy deals and had trouble finding good deals to buy. Hmm. And if I put that with the good at finding deals, there's a great way to get good at finding deals. There's a great way to get good at finding deals. And so I said, cool. If I can get good at finding deals, I know rooms full of people who want to buy those deals. And so like, if I can solve that problem for them, I won't have to worry about money. And so I built my business around just finding good deals, no matter what my strategy was going to be. If it was going to be, you know, fixing and flipping, if it was going to be being a landlord, if it was going to be doing, being a wholesaler, the thing you need to be successful at all of those. If I don't want them, I know somebody else will buy them. And so I'll always be able to make money. And so I figured out that, that I made that my game plan from the jump. And so because I made that my game plan from the jump, I had to learn to get myself into a tough situation with a, with a deal that, that is going to end up costing me money. Right. Cause if you're going to, if you're going to buy a home that you intend to keep, there's a number that you want to hit, right? As far as ROI. But if you're going to buy a home that you want to sell to somebody who wants to get a return on investment, you need to buy it even lower than that number. So I got really, really good at finding the deals and buying good deals. And so my criteria is the same now as it was then. It's just harder to meet that criteria now because the market's increasing and it's, mm. it's, it's, it's the real estate's getting more expensive everywhere and it's a seller's market right now. But yeah, I, I would always shoot for trying to buy a property at about 70% of its market value. So it looked like we got a question here. Uh, SPP yep. management says, what were some of the things you did to find good deals? Yeah, man. Uh, now that's changed throughout uh, since, since I started. So when I first started, I didn't have a bunch of money. And so, um, uh, you know, all money is is a tool no matter what industry you're in. And so if you have money, you can speed up the process. Hmm. You, you don't have money, it takes, a, it takes a little more hustle. And so getting it first to find the deals, I'd have to hustle. So I would do things like I was on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace every single day scouring for deals, right? And most people think, well, yeah, you go on Facebook and you see what people are selling. And that's what I would do. And you can find deals that way. But I would also get creative and look on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, not just in the real estate for sale section, but also looking in the real estate for rent section. And I would look for ads for rentals where they were just not great ads. The pictures were bad. You know, some was camera phone <laughs> pictures. The pictures were dark. Uh, there was, you know, the place looked dirty super outdated or maybe the rents were really really low for mm -hmm. what you would expect in that area and to me that says this landlord doesn't know how to market for good tenants which means he's probably getting bad tenants as applicants and bad tenants are a nightmare for landlords that give you tons of problems that damage your property and when you are tired of dealing with bad tenants maybe you're willing to sell it and so i would call the real estate for rent sections and say, Hey, I see you got this property for rent. Uh, would you be interested in taking an offer on it? Right. And you get some people that are interested in hearing what you got to say. Cause if you're tired of dealing with bad tenants, you're not getting good tenants applying to your ad. And somebody calls you and says, Hey, I'll give you a bunch of cash for this right now. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. People are, their ears perk up. That's smooth. <laughs> That's smooth. Right. And then I would get really creative and say, okay, how can I get more of a conversion on that? And so what I would do is I would figure out after I see the ad, I'd go do the math and figure out, okay, what would I offer for this property in like a price range? So that way, when I call, I can say, hey, hey man, I see you've got this property for rent at 123 Main Street. I'm really looking to buy a multifamily property in that area. I'd be willing to pay you anywhere if you'd be interested in, right? And that's a whole different approach than just calling and saying, would you take an offer? Because now I'm talking money, right? I've already put, mm -hmm. the, I put the offer on the table. 
And I said, hey, if I can come take a look at it, I can get exact and tell you exactly what number. But off the top of my head, I think I can offer you between X and Y, right? And if they hadn't been thinking about that before, you saying a number is going to get them thinking about, well, maybe I do want to sell it, right? And so I would do things like that to get creative on finding properties. Wow. Okay. You got my mind racing also. Like, because I've never heard anybody use a <laughs> Facebook marketplace before to find, because I, I dabbled, I dabbled, right, in, in yeah. wholesaling before technically it became illegal in Illinois. Right. So you had to go through, I think you had to go through a real estate broker in order to wholesale deals out here. And I was like, I had just gotten my feet into the industry. I was like, mm -hmm. oh man, they switching, they switching it up on me already. I was like, ah, whatever. So I, I, I moved on, but the way you approach the, the, that whole industry, as far as like you said, you started off with mindset. Would you recommend your process for people that are leaving a nine to five job and they're looking to embark in a, you know, a real estate venture to work on here first? Because yeah, I will say there is a disconnect, right? When, when you are an employee, you think differently versus a person that's an investor or business owner. Like, so there's this conflict that, cause I know I went through it. I was like, God damn, they did a number on me, man. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm, like I'm, I'm working like an employee, but I'm like, I own this business. So would you recommend that a person starts off, um, starts off with uh, reprogramming themselves and then on top of that, would you uh, would you recommend that they get information from multiple real estate investors or basically get information from, you know, like I've heard people like Grant Cardone say, hey, look, I'll find one person and learn as much as I can from that one person instead of getting a bunch of information from a bunch of different people because somebody's got to say something that's going to conflict with each other then you yeah. get that analysis paralysis and be like, well, I don't know where to move now. So my first question is, would you recommend that a newbie starts with their mindset? And the secondly, how would you suggest that a person starts um, yeah. getting a mentor or a coach? Yeah, absolutely. So 100% mindset first, right? Because now some people got the mindset down. Some people are just great with that and that's awesome if you are move on to step two but most people you got to change what's in here before you start seeing some success right um we a lot of the times just just have these mental blocks right a normal person says like for example when i had that when i got that my buddy said can you buy this property and i said yes a normal person would have said no because they would go i know i need twenty thousand dollars I only have $1,000. There's no way I can make $19,000 in the next three weeks. No, I can't buy your property. It's not possible. But an entrepreneur, a successful business person, right? That mindset is different. We, we have a mindset of how can I not, I can't. My bad, Henry, it, it cut off a little bit. I caught that, I lost right. that last part that you just said. We figure out like, how can I? Uh, so as an entrepreneur, we're focused on how can I? So instead of saying, I can't purchase this house because I don't have enough money. I said, how can I purchase this house? How can I find the money to purchase this house? Right, and that, that mentally changes things in your brain. Your brain, mm -hmm. once you say, I can't, your brain is done. It stops thinking of ways to figure it out because you've told it, I can't, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. But when you say, how can I, it keeps your mind working. It keeps your mind working on ways to figure it out. And if you always approach your problem with how can I, you'd be surprised that like, Wait a minute. I could do that. I could do that and make some extra money and then I could buy that house, right? Like it's like when you it's like when you go and you buy your fresh new, you know, red Jeep Grand Cherokee, 
right? Mm-hmm. You're like, man, I never seen nobody's got a red Jeep in Cherokee. I just got my fresh red Jeep in Cherokee. You pull off the lot, and what's the first five cars you see, right? <laughs> Jeep Cherokee. Red, red. Jeep, red Jeep Grand Cherokee's driving by. Why is that? They've always been there. You just weren't seeing them. But now that you've opened your mind up to that, these are mm-hmm. a thing, it's like they're all over the place, right? So mindset is the same way. Once you open your mind up to like, how can I get this done? You'll start seeing all these different options for how you might be able to make something happen. Mm. So mindset, absolutely first. Then I would say like your question about follow one person or follow many people, Mm -hmm. right? And my approach to that is kind of the same with, uh, uh, with just like like how to get started in general so you start off if you are just getting started you're working on your mindset then take your take your like i said you want to surround yourself with other people who are doing it so physically surround yourself get in these groups with other investors Mm -hmm. but also virtually surround yourself the you know kardashians and like all that crap that's 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 distracting you and start following these people in social media spaces who are doing the things that you want to do, right? Start listening to podcasts, reading books, buying courses, right? You want this broad swath of information. As you're going through all this, I see some, uh, uh, an influencer say something that gets your mind going. Those are cues for you to dig deeper because they resonated with you and who you are in your situation for a reason. And so as people start to say things or you start to see things or learn things that you're like, oh, that sounds interesting. Now you narrow that focus and you start deep diving in those or deriving to that person's particular right because it's inherited got nothing right like every man on things that are grabbing your attention they're grabbing your attention for a reason and then you and then you narrow your focus and right mm-hmm. so i would tell you yeah start broad start with start with p people in a broad audience, but then start to narrow it down to who's speaking to you in your situation. And then you can like narrow your focus on those people or on those subjects. Um, and you're right, there's always going to be somebody who has a contradictory method to what you're learning and doing mm-hmm. and that's successful for them. That doesn't mean you need to go do that thing. You need right. to do the thing that fits you, your lifestyle, your financial situation, your family, and your reason why. Nice. And that's the next thing I would do is you need to know why you're doing this. Why are you investing? Right. Why is that important? Because entre- because entrepreneurship is hard, bro. <laughs> like because Indeed. investing Indeed. and building generational wealth is hard, right? You're gonna you're gonna hit roadblocks and you're gonna hit the kind of roadblocks they're gonna that are gonna turn the, the normal person away, right? They're gonna you're gonna hit the kind of roadblocks that are gonna say, you know what, mm, I don't know if this is for me, right? And if you don't have a strong enough reason why that's driving you to success, that's driving you to build wealth, you're just going to walk away. And that why can't just be, I want to be rich, right? Like, I mean, maybe it can for some people, but that's not what drives me. Like, what started me on this path was the ability to provide my wife and children with the life that I felt like they deserved, right? And that's always been on the forefront. There's two things that have been on the forefront. Mm -hmm. To be able to give my wife and my kids freedom of choice to choose how they want to spend their life and their time and to to give back to my community in a way that wouldn't be possible had I stayed on the same path Mm. like unpack it brother unpack it Let it let it rip it's hard for me to be I feel like if you're going to do something like real estate, right? What you're doing is you're making money in a community from a community on a community, 
Mm. And if you if you're not putting into that community as much or more than you're getting from it, then you're a, you're doing a disservice, right? Like I just didn't feel right going into and buying properties from people and then making a profit, either renting it out or reselling it without building my community in wow. some way, shape or form. And, wow. and so like giving back to my community it is huge for me. I live here. I go to the business with and I have to feel like, man, I don't want them to see me. Right, man, I don't want them to see what I've done. I don't, mm -mm. I want people to see me and be glad that they did business with me, right? And be glad that, hey, that's the guy who helped me out of a really, really tough situation. My life is better now because I met him, right? And the only way for that to work is that you have to put people first. Real estate is a people business. It's not a real estate business. Hmm. Without the people, there is no business. And if you're not finding a way to help people in everything that you're doing, yeah. then success will be hard, man. Success will be hard. But if you're focused on how do I help this person in with a particular deal, but I'm good with that. Like if I walk into a situation where somebody's trying to sell me their home and I can figure out how to help them without buying their home and they can stay in their home mm -hmm. and I can still help them solve a problem, even if that solution costs me money, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. That's dope. Because who knows what that could lead to. But what it does is it helps them. They're contacting me because they have a problem. Look, if they could sell their house at retail value, no sweat, they wouldn't call me. They call a realtor. I'm an investor. They know I got to buy it at a discount mm -hmm. to turn a profit. So if they're calling me, they're calling me because they have a situation. As investors, we buy situations. We don't buy houses. Wow. Without buying the buy house, situations. I feel like you have an obligation to try to do that. That's so that, that, that's through. killer. You said you as investors, you buy situations, you don't buy houses. Right. That's ill. If you guys are now tuning in, we are live here with Henry Washington out in Arkansas. He is a real estate investor. He is a coach guru out here. He's bringing in a fresh new aspect to the whole real estate, how people invest, how they look at the market. As you as you hear, right, like he invests in situations, not real estate. It's a it's a people's business. Sort of like the notary industry, we are a, in a people's business. Our job is to solve people's problems. You need a loan closing, you need it at this date, you need somebody to print out the documents for you, you need us to run to FedEx and scan backs and all of this stuff. We are here to solve your problem. And I'm so thrilled to have Henry Washington here today because a lot of you guys are making really good money. And I've been getting a lot of emails from everybody asking, hey, man, I'm making this money. I need some place to put it. I want to start investing into real estate. I want to start, uh, you know, putting some sound investments to build my legacy with my thing. What up, tech out there in Oakland? Um, so we have a question from... SPP management, I'm going to unmute you. You're going to be live and on the air, brother. Hello, right. can you guys hear me? Yes. Well, yes, sir. I was just um, typing in my question, too. I'm glad you uh, <laughs> unmuted me. Can't stand typing. But uh, <laughs> so um, uh, when financing your first fix and flip deal, what would you recommend? Would you recommend going through a hard money, a hard money lender, a mortgage broker, a private? And if you go through a hard money, would you mind paying that 12, 16 percent somewhere around that the hard money um, charging or is it just like depend on the deal? What would you recommend finding? Uh, you know, what would you recommend financing that deal? Your first fix and flip. Yeah, but uh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so what I what I teach in one of my courses, I have a course called How to Finance Deals with Little to No Money Using Small Banks. 
So what I do is I teach people how to leverage small local banks to get uh, loans that will help you buy rental properties and fix and flips. And so these small local banks have loan products specifically designed for real estate investors. So you can get a loan, they call them fix and flip loans or construction loans. You can get a loan and a small bank will loan you 85% typically of the purchase price, but they will also lend you up to a hundred percent of the renovation costs. And so you can do that and you can leverage the current interest rates in the market, which are fairly low right now. And so you can go and get a loan that's gonna give you 85% of the purchase price and 100% of the rehab costs at a three to 5% interest rate. And now you can flip a house or buy a rental property and then refinance out your down payment later um, for a whole lot less money up front than you would if you were to go get a hard money loan because a hard money loan is going to have higher interest rates. They're going to have points and fees associated with it. Uh, um, hard money is expensive. I wouldn't recommend people new to investing use hard money to do a deal because nine times out of 10, you're going to miss something. You're not going to evaluate your rehab costs properly or you're going to pay a little bit too much for a deal because you're so new now you're compounding the mistakes you're gonna make as a new investor with using an expensive loan product. And so if you're using an expensive loan product and you make a mistake, it not only costs you money for making the mistake, but it costs you money for the time it's gonna take for you to have this expensive loan product longer. So um, if you guys, anybody on this, anybody on this call um, wants access to any of my courses just for for being a part of this, I'll give everybody- Yeah, plug it in, brother, plug it in, man. 70% discount on my courses. Um, you What's the website? You can go to gum, gumroad, G-U-M-R-O-A-D dot com slash Henry Washington. And that will take you to all my courses. You can, you can buy any of my courses at 70% off if you use code START. S-T-A-R-T. That'll give you a 70% discount. Um, I have a course on how to finance deals like I just talked about and a course on how to find deals. So it's great if you're just getting started. If you want to learn how to get started and you want to learn how to go find great deals, tips like I talked about with going and looking on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for properties for rent, tons of tips and things like that to help people get started finding great deals and so uh, feel feel free guys uh, yeah so i put the i put the link in the chat you guys can go check it out it's gumroad.com forward slash henry washington use the yep. coupon gumroad. code start to get 70 yep. percent off man that's awesome bro that's right. i gotta, appreciate I gotta that, that. A lot. yes no worries gumroad uh, yeah, so we're in the uh, Q and A portion right now. If you guys want to go ahead and tap, uh, type in your questions, or if you want to go live with Henry Washington, go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll be more than happy to let you guys go live. Um, we got people on Facebook saying, um, "Great interview, um, awesome, that's dope, that's dope." All right. right, yeah, Henry. So okay, so real quick, Henry. Um, I saw you at the Hero Conference, right? And I saw the, the young dude, you know, just bursting out in tears because you guys like matched this, this $2,500 to give out to, um, you know, I guess to help out blind people. Is that right? Yep. yep. So like, let me ask you this, man, because this is rare. Where did you get this passion to want to teach people? Yeah. Um, the short answer is, um, it's in my blood, man. My, my father and my stepmother were high school teachers for their whole career. So I was just raised around people who had a passion for teaching. Now, I never thought that I would be a teacher. Like I, I never <laughs> thought that I would teach anybody anything. Um, but 
you know, when you're raised around it, it's just kind of in you. It's, it's, it's buried in you. Right. And then once I started, once I found real estate investing and I found this passion for it, but not only did I find a passion, I found how life changing it can be. I mean, mm-hmm. look, I mean, I mean, you know, I, three and a, three years and nine months, bro. Like, yeah, that's how from my first property to I just quit my day job. It was three years and nine months. That's incredible. Like that's life changing for people. That's not a long time. It may seem like a long time if you're in the middle of, you know, a job that you hate right now. But I want people to know that like, I'm, I'm just a dude, y'all. Like, 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 I didn't know any of this existed beforehand. And I've, I've taken nothing and turned it into now I get to do this full time. I don't have to rely on anybody else's job to feed my family. And like that power of choice is incredible. And so when I started to see how powerful real estate was, like I just felt this calling to like share this information with as many people as possible, especially people that look like you and I, because we don't have We haven't historically had somebody in our bloodline in our family tree that had this financial information, this financial acumen to to help us understand how to build generational wealth, right? And so like me uh, and and George Pitts, he's another um, business coach and investor. We were having this conversation the other day and he was talking to me about um, imposter syndrome and like Mm. how scared he got when he started to invest in real estate and how scared he got when he started to, you know, uh, teach people this, this financial education, right? Like, like, yeah, please break that syndrome. down. Cause that, that was my next question to you, bro. Like yeah. what, 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 for those that don't know what imposter syndrome is, I mean, like it, it says it, but you know, like, can you unpack that and say like what it is and, sure. and, and then go into that whole generational wealth of what you do? Cause that, to me, that was mind blowing what you did. Go ahead. Yeah, man. So, so imposter syndrome, it, it applies to anybody. But like when you think of, especially people of color, right? Like once you start doing something, like once we, we all have something, right? We all have a gift. We all have a purpose, right? And we all have that thing that we do better than most people with the least amount of effort, right? Everybody's got it. You just may not have found it yet, but everybody has a thing. Right. And as you start to develop that thing, right. And you start to share it with more people. Sometimes we get this feeling of imposter syndrome, like, well, well, why would anybody want to listen to what I have to say? Yeah. Right. Why would anybody want to buy what I have to sell? Right. Why would anybody care about my journey? Right. And that imposter syndrome starts to set in and then it keeps us from sharing our gifts with the world. It keeps Hmm. us from learning and growing uh, generational wealth if we, if we buy into it, right. And we have to push through those things. I think an added layer of that for people of color is like a lot of people who look like us grew up in environments where people told us that you were never going to be nothing, right. If you not rapping or playing ball, then you ain't nothing. You don't got nothing to provide this world. (laughs) Nobody wants what you got. Right. And so like, not only do we have to overcome imposter syndrome, but we have to also see that like, we are worth it. We are worthy of generational wealth. We are, our gifts are valuable and people see value in us, right? Like we've got to overcome those obstacles. And so when you talk about imposter syndrome and fear right like Mm -hmm. what the story mr george mr george pitts was telling us is that when he was going to buy his first investment property he had a panic attack at the closing table because all these what ifs started to come into his mind what if i can't rent it what if i can't make any money what if i can't sell it like what if the the house falls apart the day after i buy it like he it was just all this fear and imposter syndrome hit him at once and like what I, what I told him, what I want people to understand is that like, like us as first generation, generational wealth builders, we have this responsibility, right? To share with other, with our family and other people how to do this. And so that 
feeling of fear, that overwhelming, that crippling anxiety he was feeling, right? Those are the feelings of breaking generational curses, mm. right? Because we haven't had anybody else in our family that experienced those, those feelings to be able to tell us that it's coming. Like these fears are coming. These, these, you're going to feel inferior. You're going to feel like you can't do it. Right. And you got to be able to push through that and build wealth. And so now as we experience those things, we can prepare our children for when they're continuing the wealth creation in the family, that these things are coming. And here's how I overcame them. Here's how you can overcome them so that they're even more prepared than we were when those roadblocks come. Right. Because if you look at, you know, if you look at white families who have had properties in the family for generation, handed down for generation to generation, mm -hmm. they, they buy property all the time, right? They, they're not scared. That's what I told George. Sometimes they don't even show up at the close. Somebody sends them documents to their house or they e-sign it and they're like, oh, look, that's, that's a, a fact. building. And they move on with their day, right? That is a fact right? because, because generational wealth has been created and handed down over. You're right, because as notaries, we've done, I, I know I've done many power right. of attorney documents where they just have the lawyer represent them at the closing. They don't even right. show up. They don't even show up. Generational wealth, man. And so because we're the first, we're the, we're the curse breakers, we have to endure the pain, right? Trailblazers, they deal with pain. You think it's easy to just go through a, a, a path of brush with your machete? You're going to get the nicks and the cuts and the bruises, right? You're the one blazing the trail, right? But generations behind you get to walk in your footsteps and it's a lot easier for them. So, you know, those feelings that you're feeling, you're supposed to be feeling them. So you're that's the good. Curses. It's actually a good the feeling. For your family. It's a good, yes, absolutely. You need to view it as a badge of honor. You need to view it as a gift, right? You've been provided this gift of changing the direction of your family lineage and your family tree forever, right? It starts with you. And so if you think it's gonna be easy, it's not. You're gonna get some nicks some cuts some bruises, right? You're gonna fall down, right? But that's, it's your responsibility to keep blazing so that your children and their children and their children can continue to walk in the path that you created. I love it. I love it. Thank you, bro. So we got a we got a question, a real good question from Lashanta. Uh, she says, if a person have a thousand dollars and wants to start investing, where would you say start? Good question, Lashanta. Uh, I, I, I'm in that position yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd say mindset and education, right? Mm. So it depends on where you are in your in your education in your education so far, right? So if you know nothing of real estate investing, nothing of real estate investing, and you're just, just starting out, then um, I think it would be beneficial for you to spend a little bit of that money on, on educating yourself. Um, you can absolutely educate yourself for free. So don't feel like you have to go and buy courses. You don't gotta go buy my courses. You don't gotta buy anybody's courses, right? I just bought, I, I didn't buy courses when I started, but it probably took me a lot longer to get to my how I'm gonna do this than it would have had I bought a course, right? Mm. You don't need to. Buying courses buys you time, right? It buys you convenience because somebody's taken all this information, they've taken all the lessons that they've learned and they put it in a pretty package with a bow around it so you can kind of get that information quickly. You can go learn the same stuff on your own. It's just gonna take you a little longer to get there. So whichever path you feel like fits your financial situation is what you should do, right? but um, you might want to invest a little bit into some education so you can learn um, how to get started. And then um, you want to take small, meaningful action, right? And so I can't tell you what you should do with that thousand dollars because I don't know what's the best approach from a real estate perspective for you. For me, I knew I wanted to find good deals. I knew I wanted to be, have this consistent flow of good deals and then I could cherry pick my favorite ones and then I could sell the rest of them. That's the approach that fit my style. And so when I had a thousand dollars, it was best used for me on marketing because marketing brings you deal flow, right? Mm. Now, if you're not gonna market to find off market deals, if that's not how you're gonna get your deal flow, if that's not how you're gonna buy property, then you need to figure out like 
what your strategy is going to be and then spend that money on the thing that's going to propel you forward the most, right? Like in the like, you need to focus on the one thing. Like if you did so, when you think about your approach to real estate investing, right? When you figure out what your approach is going to be, then you want to spend that money on the one thing that's going to be the most impactful to your real estate investing journey. Let me ask you this uh, before we sign off. Uh, did you start off with a single family or did you do a, a multifamily? My first deal was a single family. Okay. Yeah. Again, wasn't by design. It's just the way that it's just the way things fell. Like, I don't want people to think that like you got to buy a single family and then you got to buy a duplex and then you can move into a small multifamily. Like, I don't also want people to think, well, a lot of people think, well, I should start off being a wholesaler because then I can make some money and then I can go buy rentals. Figure out what you want to do. What's your why, <laughs> right? For me, my why was my family and being able to create passive income. And the way to create passive income is to buy rental properties. And so you should focus on what your why is. Like, I'm not saying don't go be a wholesaler. If you want to be a wholesaler, if you feel like that's your why, that's going to get you to where you want to go, absolutely do it. Build a wholesaling business, get great at it. Don't just do wholesaling because you think it's your first step to get you to your goal of buying rental property or get you to your goal of flipping houses. Like figure out what you want to do and then focus on that thing. If you want to be a house flipper, you don't got to wholesale properties. Be a house flipper, right? If you focus on finding a good deal, right? You're going to have to do the same thing. If you want to wholesale, you still need to go find a good deal, right? But if you approach that good deal from the mindset of I'm doing this for me, I'm finding me a property to flip, even though I don't feel like I got the money to close on it. Once you go find that good deal and you get that good deal on the hook, bro, you're going to do whatever you got to do to try to close on that deal. And if it's truly a good deal, you'll find money. Everybody wants to buy part of a good deal, right? Like if somebody called me in my local market and say, Hey, I'm just getting started. I've got this great deal. I don't know how I'm going to close on it. Can you help me? I'm going to go out of my way to try to help them. Right. And if you want to partner with somebody like 50% of a good deal is better than 0% of no deal. Right. If you got to go partner with somebody Thanks. who's got money and you got to give up 50% of the profits, you're still going to get 50% of the profits and you're going to learn along the way. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right. Oh man. Hey, let me ask you a question, man. Don't you have a birthday coming up Saturday? Uh, I do. I do, man. I do. Oh, I do. Man. Told you, man. Good. <laughs> We got to give you your flowers while you're here, man. Money shower yeah, on you, baby. Uh, you got the money shower, man. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, I have to wish you a happy happy early birthday, man, for real. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you very much. I hey, I truly much. appreciate you being on this this do you, podcast, do you, this show, man. You you know, do you, you need my address the so you can put all that money shower in an envelope and send it to me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you want blue <laughs> bills, it's all yours, baby. You can have all these blue bills. I'll send you a stack. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank man, you so much. Thank this you is, for, for gracing this, this, this platform with your presence, brother. Like, when I meet young brothers like yourself that's that's doing these things and like really impacting um our culture and the way that you're doing it i i go out of my way to try to get in contact with them so thank you so much man. i want to thank you i want to salute you i wish you your family the very very best in everything that you guys do man continue shining i look forward to seeing your progress and everything thank you and i i, I want to have you on the show again man like it and okay so we always end off with this too where do you see Henry Washington five years from now, brother? Oh, man. Yes, man, sir. Man, man. Five years from now. So five years from now, I would, uh, as far as my business is concerned, I would, I would hope that I'm at double, at least double the doors that I have. So I've got 65 rentals right now. So 65. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I'd want to be at about double that. Um, and then my plan is to, so my, my strategy is once I hit that number or close to that number, I'm probably going to look to sell off half my portfolio and then take the profits from that half to pay off the other half. So I go, 
Uh, so, so, by, have, so you want to own them free and clear? Free and clear, right? Because free and clear, like quadruples your cash flow, right? Because now I don't have mortgages on them. So if I'm making, let's say I'm making $200 per rental unit and mm-hmm. I have a mortgage on it. Once I pay that mortgage off, that jumps to like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a thousand dollars per unit and so if i can take half the units sell them and pay off the other half i i make way more cash flow than i did with double the units that makes and so i don't sense. and i don't have the 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 worry of being over leveraged or if the market tanks what am i going to do because i've got these loans i won't have any more loans so the market can tank all at once too because my homes are paid off so it's a protection strategy love it love it love it Thank you again, brother. Salute, salute, salute to you, man. Thank you, sir. And I wish you guys the very best. Everybody out there that tuned in for this exclusive real estate edition, because you guys know, man, we we don't just fight on the ground. We fight underwater. We fight in the air. We're fighting in space. That's why this is the notary war room. It's more than just one terrain. So peace, love, and happiness to all you guys. Wish you guys the very best. You heard?